Hello there. Welcome back, and welcome to part 42 in my build log of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am working on the poop deck, and specifically I am working on the aft bridge, or the docking bridge. Um, I've been putting this job off because I've been a little bit worried that it's a bit... It's, it's a little bit delicate, might get damaged if, um, uh, if I was to knock the boat or anything like that, but I think I'm at a point now, really where I need to start doing the delicate jobs anyway. So uh, aft bridge is today. I'll be getting the lighting installed on it as well, but I'm probably not going to get around to actually getting the lighting working today, so that may well be the next video. Um, just as a heads up, the winner of the giveaway competition from a couple of videos ago will be announced at the end of this. So if you've entered into that, stick around to the end and you will find out if you have been victorious. But for now, I will shut up and crack on. So I'm just sort of working out how I'm going to get the lighting on the afterbridge. In total, I'm going to do four different bulbs, um, one at each end and then two in the middle, just in this sort of corner here. Um, and I know that's not exactly how the lighting was done on the afterbridge, but I think any more um, and it'll just look too bright and any less. And I think you'll get a sort of unevenly lit kind of appearance, which wouldn't look particularly good either. And, you know, that's kind of what the modeling on this size um, model is all about really, just trying to sort of work out what bits of realism are worth sacrificing for the sake of a better effect really. Um, so I've added a bit of photo etch, this comes with a KA set, um, this is, you know, it's just a fairly simple sort of door etched in and a side piece, um, and there's a couple of sort of ventilation ducts on here. Um, and what I've done I'm conscious that wiring might look a bit rubbish on this because this is such a thin piece and it's quite easy to see underneath it. Um, it's not like a deck where there's plenty of deck beams to hide the wires in. With this, there isn't really. So what I've done is I've sort of cut a trench um, along the length of the aft bridge. Um, and then to run the wires up to the aft bridge, I've cut two holes in the, um, the side pieces. So these pieces go at the ends respectively, one over there and one over here. So you can see the logic, it's fallen over, but you can see the logic. The wires come up through the deck, through these pieces, and then they run, one bulb will go out this way and the other will go here, here, through this piece again, here, and then the return wire will come down. Now you might, you might say it probably would have been easier to run the wire through this piece. And it probably would, there's a lot more space and it's already got a sort of nice indentation in it and so on. The reason I was hesitant about doing that though um, is because really I only want one wire going through this trench. And by having the returns coming through each of these pillars, I achieve that because I just simply have, you know, bulb, positive, negative, bulb, positive, negative, bulb, positive, negative, bulb, positive, negative. It'll make more sense when I show you the wires in situ um, but with this method, I'll only actually ever have one wire going the length of that. And that wire can then be glued in place um, and I can paint over the top. And hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully it will be fairly difficult to even see. I might do a bit of filling and stuff as well, but I'm, hope I'm hopeful that that will be quite hard to see once it's done. So that's the plan. I'll get these three items painted up. Uh, then I will return, get the bulbs fitted. And the idea is I want to have the entire bridge made up with two wires hanging out the end and then I can then drill it and glue it down onto the model. So this is just a time lapse of me drilling holes in the pillars for the aft bridge. Um, and I use my trusty old hand drill for this. And I've really missed it. Um, you think back to drilling all those portholes in the hull and I've missed the hand cramps you get using this drill for far too long. So in this clip I'm just gluing the LEDs at the very extremities of the aft bridge. Um, you can see that I'm just sort of extending the trench a little bit with the, um, the craft knife and the microfile just to make sure that it goes far enough out. Um, and what I'm doing with this is I'm sort of gluing the LEDs in place with some CA, um, orientating the wires to make sure that um, one is able to go through the pillar down into the deck and the other sort of runs along, along the underside of the aft bridge to the next LED.
So for these central lights, what I've done is I've just drilled a couple of holes, just ooh, half a mil deep into the plastic. You can see that here, what that's allowed me to do is it's just allowed me to sink the LED into the actual plastic of the, um, the aft bridge that little bit more, just to disguise them that bit more. And I think it's probably not actually necessary because there's going to be pillars here and all sorts of gubbins which probably will hide stuff. But even so, this is about as an exposed area as LEDs will be on the ship, so I do just want to do my absolute best to disguise them. So you can see I'm just popping the next one in now. Um, and it's all just about getting the um, getting the small piece of light circuit board that the LED is mounted on correctly orientated in the hole. If you don't get the LED orientated correctly, the light will sort of shine out at a weird angle, um, which of course is a uh, not particularly helpful, really. That's us. Good out. Now it's a case of gluing in place. So for an operation like this, ideally you need about 17 different hands. Sadly, I don't have that. I only have two, but as long as you're a bit careful and dexterous, it's not that bad. And then in this sort of situation, a, uh, a, a CA glue activator or kicker is absolutely worth its weight in gold because I don't have to hold it for ages. I can just squirt, squirt the thing on and about five seconds later, I can I can take my fingers away and it's there. So now, obviously it's difficult to sort of picture it at the moment because there's wires galore. But now I'm in a situation where all of these wires, provided I can be neat enough with my soldering, all of these wires run hidden within the plastic of the aft bridge like that. So. The next job is to get these soldered up. So I've done the first one myself there, just because I wanted to make sure I was sort of getting it right. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to make the, um, the wires taut. Uh, because if they're not taut, it's gonna be very, very difficult to hide this stuff under uh, in the trench that I've made. So I'm sort of crossing them as I've done in previous use of these LEDs, but I'm also trying to pull them a bit tighter than I probably otherwise would. You know, these are fine, fine wires, so it doesn't take a lot of pulling before they break, so I don't want to be going mad with this. But equally, if you don't make them relatively taut, you you just not you're not going to achieve what you want to achieve, which is hiding these wires underneath the um, the plastic. So that's pretty good. Am I going to just solder them on? There we are. That's probably a bit too big a glob of solder, but that's pretty good, I reckon. So. What I'll do now is I'll glue it in place as a priority, then I'll cut off wires. So let me get just a little bit of glue. Run it all the way along this trench so that I can really get a decent amount of bond on the, the entire length of the wire. And fix it in place. That's fairly decent, I reckon. So now that that's actually held, I 
I can cut the excess wire away. And I'm left with the finished result. So tricky, but not unachievable. You see there's very little wire now actually above that area. The only bit that you can really see is that bit sticking out there. And that shouldn't matter because I'm going to put a rim around the outside anyway to make it look like this area is made out of eye section, which it actually was. Okay, so I'm just adding the edging now to the after bridge. Most of it's done. Um, it's all pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just do the last piece for the camera. So this is needing to go along here like that, into this place, and along there. Uh, just before we go any further, I will make sure that there's appropriate space here, because it feels like it's a bit tight. Right. Okay. So a bit of CA. And on these long runs like this, I tend to just put a bit on to get it started. So the piece is now, you know, stuck on. And then I can pop it down on the table and actually carry on and do a bit more. There's just a little bit of conflict there. Which I'm going to try to remove. That's probably a bit better. It's just a case of trimming down to size. There we are. See? We have a nicely edged after bridge with lights on. So here are the two bits of bar that I need to make up the, um, the various pillars that I'm doing here. So I'm doing the pillars uh, for the aft bridge and also the pillars that support the rear end of the boat deck. Uh, from a deck beneath. Uh, so this is not a tricky operation, but all I'm doing is I'm just painting the whole length in etch prime, because at some point I will actually need to use the entire pillar anyway. So I may as well prime the entire lot now. So got three pillars now cut out, slightly oversized. I prefer these to be a bit longer so that they can fit into the holes there and also the holes in the deck. Um, and obviously if they're a bit longer, that gives us a bit more opportunity to actually do that. So, a bit of glue. And 
then straight in. We splash a kicker. Lovely. And then we repeat the process for the other two. These are the um, these are one point two mil thick, so they're quite thick. And I think I think on the actual ship, um, I'm sure that they were structural, but I suspect that they also probably um, held the the wires for the various bits of equipment that were on the after bridge. For example, there was a there was a tiller there. Um, and there were also a couple of engine telegraphs as well. So I suspect that these pillars actually held all the wiring so that that equipment could communicate with the um, with its respective areas, um, which is probably why they're so much thicker, because, I mean, 1.2 mil at this scale would make a very, very thick pillar on the ship. And I'm not saying that 1.2 is wrong in this case, but it just seems very thick. Right, keep that, that glue driver request. Anyway, so there we are, three pillows in place, starting to look like a very nice docking bridge, really. So I'm just doing the other slightly thinner poles now. Um, And I'm just, I, I tend to use my uh, Leatherman for cutting these, just because it's a fairly robust cutting method. So we get the pole and the grips as so. And then there you are, nice and simple. And then the advantage of it is that it's quite a nice, easy cutting mechanism. And then you can just use a microfile to um, smooth off the ends. Now, this is the one area, or it's one of the areas, where the KA structures are a little bit, they're not that clear on where poles uh, went on the aft bridge. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of struggling to work out what I need, but I think what I'm going to go for is one there and one there and one there and one there. Um, there's possibly also a couple of diagonal ones coming elsewhere, but I'll um, I'll keep sort of working through this as I go. So we have a little issue here, um, and this is an issue I've been aware of for a while, but I just haven't really bothered to solve it until now. Um, you'll notice that um, the pillars at either side and the pillars in the middle are all pretty much the same height. Um, whereas the area where the stairs go, this part here, is significantly shorter. Uh, just as a note, ignore how bad the paintwork is on that. That will be rectified soon. Um, but yes, the stair area is quite a lot shorter. Now, initially I thought maybe this is something to do with camber. You know, when you design most deck structures, you put a sort of a bend like that in them so that water runs off uh, towards the sides of the ship. Um, but this would be the wrong way for that. This would mean that water would run into the middle. So I don't know if it's just a mistake from Trumpeter or I don't know whether the the original deck piece on Trumpeter had a raised section to accept this. I don't know why this is the way it is, but what I'm doing to solve it is I'm just gluing a few struts of plastic uh, onto the underside. So you can see that that now pretty much raises us up to the same height. Um, and I'll sand those down and paint them so that we've got a similar colour and that should rectify the issue nicely. So as you can see, I've now bolstered up this area with two layers of plastic strut 
this stuff, the same stuff I use for the ribbing and the ceilings. Um, and we're now at a point where this is at the same level as these pillars, which is good. So I'm going to sort of going to be fairly liberal in this area with CA glue, let it all dry naturally, and then I'm going to start sanding this back. Um, and I'll probably have to use a bit of filler here and there just to sort of neaten up the job, but that's not a problem. So what I've done here is I've just applied a layer of putty around the outsides to uh, mask the fact that I've used different plastics and I've sort of, you know, bolted lots of bits on. So that'll dry and then I'll paint and hopefully that'll be us in a good place. And here's the first test fit. Um, it's tr tricky. It's one of these things where there's a lot of different things that all have to line up in one go. You've got to get the two pillars at either end lining up with their respective wooden markings on the deck, um, and all of the different poles in the central section have to align with the holes that are cut into the deck as well. So it's quite a sort of geometric puzzle, this one. Right, the time has come just to sort of see how well the afterbridge fits. So what I'm going to do, I've drilled holes now on the actual poop deck. So I'll run the wires in, and hopefully now you can sort of see what I was meaning at the start of the video. You see I've got my positive feed there, the first LED there, then second LED there, third LED there, fourth LED there, negative feed comes back down the other pole. So there's only one wire running the whole length. So that was what I was meaning at the start. I'm not sure how clear it was, but there we are. Uh, anyway, so... Of course, it's tricky because there's lots of stuff on the deck sort of doing its absolute best to get in the way, but that is pretty good, actually. Um, I should say that's pretty good fit. The poles, yeah, for the most part, look like they're fitting okay. Could do with moving some other poles a bit further forward, but yeah, I think that's going to work. Okay, right. Right, what I'll do then is I'll um, put it in place. Sorry, folks, forgot to hit play on the camera or record or whatever the button is. I know modern technology. Um, so <laughs> I've just, to fill you in, I've just stuck the first part of the uh, aft bridge down now, and I'm just going to go around getting the rest of the stuff glued in. Thought it was unrealistic to hope to get everything glued in in one straight go, so I've just sort of done a little bit at a time, and I'm now just doing one pillar at a time, you see? But the take home message so far is it's all going very well, so that's good news.
So the last little job is that there's a, um, a single pillar which goes at a diagonal angle to support the docking bridge or the aft bridge. And so I'm just trying to make that now and you can see what I've done here is I've just filed this um, bar down so that the end is on an angle so that it will sit at the correct angle. So I now need to cut this down to the right length and then it's a simple case of gluing on with that. And so there we are, there's the diagonal pillar in place and that's the after bridge all sorted now. And I think overall very happy with it. Looks quite um, sturdy. It actually is now quite sturdily in place as well. There's a lot of fixings to it so it's hopefully not going to go anywhere. Um, and it sort of completes most of the work now on the um, on the poop deck. There's just a little bit more to do in terms of railings and people and stuff like that, but the majority of the work is now done. So there we are, there's the aft bridge or the docking bridge, and it's a curious little part of the ship really because functionally it only really is used for docking, hence the name, you know, it, it can, it provides a sort of another area for officers to operate um, at the opposite end of the ship from the main bridge. Um, but it, from what I can tell about it, it was actually stationed, there was someone stationed on it throughout the entirety of the voyage because George Thomas Rowe was on the aft bridge on April the 14th when the Titanic struck the iceberg because he actually, he actually saw it glide by and hadn't realised that the Titanic had hit. Um, and in fact, about 45 minutes later, he was still unaware that there was anything wrong until he saw a lifeboat floating in the ocean. <laughs> Um, at which point he rang the bridge to ask what was wrong and he must have been about the last person on the Titanic to realise something was seriously up with the ship. But anyway, that's my interpretation of the aft bridge done now. Um, in the next video I will be getting the lighting working on that and I'll be doing a few other things. I'll be putting a few other pillars and stuff in and around the ship as well. Um, but for now, that's it for this video. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, comments, whatever, pop them down below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. Um, if you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe. But of course, there was also three parts to give away, and a winner hath been selected. Thank you to everyone who entered. There was quite a lot of people, so that's really, really good. Um, and the answer, of course, was Joseph Bell. He was chief engineer on board the Titanic. And the reason I chose an engineer for the answer was because, well, firstly, I'm an engineer myself, but secondly, and more importantly, um, you think how long the light stayed on when the Titanic sank. They went out about six minutes before the ship actually sank. That is remarkable. You know, this isn't a modern ship. This is a ship that requires steam generated by boilers in boiler rooms that are rapidly filling up with freezing water. That steam then has to go to generators, which have to spin to actually generate electricity. Um, it is such a miracle that the light stayed on as long as they did. Um, and testament to how skilled all of the engineers and stokers were on the Titanic. And when you think how much worse the sinking could have been if the lights hadn't stayed on as long as they did, it really is quite humbling, really. So just, you know, fantastic role models. The winner is Masencio Isco, so congratulations. What I've done is I've replied to your comment um, when you answered Joseph Bell. Uh, there's an email address there. So what you need to do is email me that and we'll arrange postage for these parts to be sent across to you. So, congratulations. Um, thank you everyone for entering. There will be more giveaways in the future, so don't lose heart. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.